In this video, I'm going to be sculpting a hideous monster from scratch, randomly generated using cards made by some of the most talented artists on YouTube. This video is part of the second Monster Bash, a massive collaboration set up by Trent from Miscast. I really enjoyed watching the first Monster Bash, so I gladly accepted when I was invited to take part. This one was way bigger than the first one, with a whopping 13 people taking part, each one of them bringing a unique style and plenty of talent to the table. The way it works is each participant draws 20 monster parts. Limbs, features, textures, faces, items, and then we all print them out, cut out cards, and randomly draw 7 cards from the pile of cards that we have. Unfortunately, I was traveling at the time the call was scheduled, but luckily Studson had this brilliant idea to take all the cards that we designed and put them in a video where all the images just flash by quickly and you can stop the video at a random time and get a pretty random draw of cards. So I called in from the back seat of the car on my phone and we did a random draw. Okay. So can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay. How many cards are we drawing? Uh, well, I'm thinking <laughs> six. I kind of oh, want to do seven. You want to do seven? Okay, we're do doing seven. seven. I want yes! to do seven. No, 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 seven. No. Okay. So we're all going to draw one card and we'll show it. We'll reveal it to everyone what we got. Put it up to the camera. Okay. I don't know why I'm yelling. This is so, <laughs> <laughs> this is so down, Three, two, one, go. <laughs> what is that? What is... <laughs> so after a fun call, it all worked out and I got seven cool cards that I'm pretty happy with. So let's take stock of the cards that I drew. We have this magic wand from Berserker Works this gruesome arm from Jazza, this hook and blade in a wizard sleeve with a chain by Danny from 3D Printed Tabletop, this claw from Lila Mev, this set of scales from Eliza Does Things, uh, these porcupine spines, which were actually my own card that I drew, and finally this gnarly mouth full of concentric teeth by Sinister Grackle and Jesse from Little Giants Crafts that reminds me of a lamprey or the original Sarlacc before they remastered it and gave it a beak. I love it. What's the deal with Lamprey's mouths anyways? Parasitic carnivorous species that are the most well known by boring into the flesh of other fish to suck their blood. <laughs> nice. All right, so I put all the cards together and I started brainstorming what kind of creature to make. I knew right away I wanted the mouth to be large and central, and I thought it would be really cool if the monster didn't even really have a head, it was just this ravenous mouth in the center of its body. The wand arm is something I was having a lot of trouble with figuring out how to make it work, until I had this cool idea that what if this monster was once a powerful sorcerer or wizard who dabbled with the wrong spells and uh, was hideously transformed by the fickle winds of magic into some grotesque parody of the man that he once was. Yeah, that's the, that's the kind of thing that, uh, that really gets the wheels turning. And uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can go a lot of places with that. So I really like that. So it also ties in another of my designs. This here is my, uh, my Night Lord Sorcerer. This is an older model. But uh, a lot of the sorcerers in the Games Workshop range have these distinctive robes. And since uh, Danny's design had uh, some sleeve elements and the uh, wand card also had a sleeve on it, that's perfect. I can tie in these blue robes, which will bring in the midnight clad blue theme for my army. And then also uh, allow me to cover a lot of mistakes with a nice big piece of putty. So. So I really like the arm that Jazza drew. It's got this really cool gesture to it. And it kind of implies a whole gesture for the whole body just by looking at that one limb. There's kind of, it's ripping out of its own flesh. It's like a guy transforming into a werewolf or some sort of hideous mutated creature. And there's, it kind of immediately spoke to me of this like, ah, 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 like sort of spine arched, like convulsive movement. And I love that, it's so cool. But every time I sort of pictured that, that spine arch position, I, I could feel my, my chest and my rib cage tilting upwards. And I knew that I wanted to have that big lamprey-like mouth on the top of the chest pointing forwards 
So my solution was to take that sort of flexed arm and rotate it up like this. So with those design elements sorted, I got to work sketching out the whole creature and the pose that I was going to sculpt it in. I used the claw to inspire the foot, I added a third arm so I could accommodate both a hook and a wand, and then I added spines and scales to the back, and I'm ready to start sculpting. I started with a chunk of tin foil for the base, and then on top of that I added some fine wire to build an armature to put some strength inside the limbs to build up afterwards. So I really just started wrapping that around. I've never really done this before, if I'm honest. Um, the closest thing that I've made is a tree made out of wire and tin foil, and I guess the principles are fairly similar. Uh, it's always comforting to be able to blame any grotesque and disproportionate elements on the fact that it is in fact a monster. So that's always nice. But uh, I added tin foil to that wire armature to bulk up the limbs making sure that I was getting the sort of pose that I wanted to and that the silhouette was right. Good models always have a really strong silhouette so they can read at a distance when you're playing with them on the table. Here I'm bulking up the back of them with a little bit more rumpled up tin foil. This is really not very stable on its own so the next step is to use some Sculpey which is an oven bake clay that starts off kind of crumbly but once you knead it together in your hands it becomes a really nice workable material that's nice and smooth and I uh, worked it together a little piece of that and started covering my armature with this Sculpey. Um, really just using my fingers at this stage I find that that's the best sort of tool for this because a lot of it is to pinch it and make sure there's not air bubbles underneath or anything and what better tool than the ones that nature gave us, our hands, right? So once I'd covered the whole basic armature with this oven bake clay, I started to turn my attention to some details that I would add later on, specifically the porcupine spines that I would be putting on the back. And I accomplished this by just rolling these little logs of putty under my finger, tapering them to one end, then I had the idea to add some wires to the inside of them to make them have some structural integrity so they wouldn't be so brittle and I think that was the right call. So I put all that inside a little baking tray, set the oven to 275 and pop that bad boy in there. Make sure to turn on the oven light so you can watch it. Nice. When this stuff comes out of the oven, it's rock hard, but I wanted a little more twist to the pose after second guessing it, so I twisted it, and you can see cracks opened up in the hard putty, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna use some of this two-part epoxy putty that's called Milliput, which is, uh, some of you gamers might be familiar with this as using it for conversions and stuff. It's pretty good stuff, it dries rock hard, but it's, uh, it leaves this nasty residue on your fingers, which I don't like, but that's neither here nor there. I also added a little bit of green stuff, which is another two-part epoxy putty. And the reason I did this was to mix it in with the milliput. It makes it stick better to the air-dry clay. And this is something I never would have known if I hadn't had some timely advice from some of my co-creators on this challenge. Uh, Raquel, Bill, Luke, Trent, they were all really helpful hanging out in Discord, providing their experience with working with these materials, and that was invaluable to me. So thanks, guys. You can see here I'm just adding muscle bellies to flesh out the arms uh, to make a nice little bicep here. I really like that you can have this hard oven dry clay underneath and then start working with these epoxy putties on top because this way I'm not squishing and deforming the basic structure out of place as I try to add some of these details. And that's super gratifying. To be able to just lock in those details in the oven dry clay and keep moving forward is really a game changer for me. Here you can see I'm sculpting the foot uh, and then I add these thick sort of erector spinae type slabs of muscle and fat onto the back and the reason I made them so thick is first of all it adds a nice grotesque hunched posture that I think really works nicely but also 
it gives me some thick putty to stick those wires in for my spines to be embedded in the back. And this ended up really strong and really nice. This first one I didn't use any glue, but I started adding super glue as I went. And I was actually thrilled with how this was turning out. And this is when I started to get really excited about this sculpture. I probably never would have attempted something like these porcupine spines if I hadn't been doing this challenge. It's, uh, it's a card that as I was drawing it, since it's one that I drew, I was thinking, oh geez, I hope, you know, I pity the person who draws this card because that's going to be pretty hard to execute. And then I drew it myself, which is, uh, you know, karma at its finest, but I'm really glad I did because it was a cool challenge that I probably would have shied away from if I hadn't just drawn it randomly and been obligated to give it a shot. So for the wizard's wand, I ended up going with more of a staff because it's a pretty large creature and I think it justifies it. And since I didn't have a piece of brass rod or anything, I added some putty to the tip of this galvanized nail, which has this really nice twisty haft to it, which I think really works as a sort of wizard's staff. And I sculpted it to look like an eye at the top of it. And I thought maybe he sees through the end of his staff or something. That'd be cool. And here I'm just adding some nice saggy breasts. Uh, you know, which adds to the grotesquery of it. And then adding some striations to the deltoid. Uh, to really give that exposed muscle look. That is a cue from Jazz's design where the skin is sort of sloughing off to reveal this rippling hideous musculature underneath really quite inspiring once all these ideas come together and i'm starting to really enjoy this process to sculpt the hand here on the top i probably should have used an armature the way it ended up i kind of wrestled with all these little sausages of putty in the air and it turned out all right i'm i'm pretty proud of myself but i think i can do better in the future but uh, I definitely learned a lot during this process about what to do, what not to do, and how these materials behave more than anything. I really started to get a nice feeling for these materials and that was probably the most satisfying part of this process for me. So here you can see me threading the staff through the loop of wire that I left for this monster's hand. And the reason I didn't do the hand yet is so I would be able to be a little bit more free in sculpting the staff and then I can always sculpt in the basics of the hand later which you see me doing here just pinching that putty down to make sure that it grips the staff nicely but I also wanted to be removable so it's still removable and I'm pretty happy with that you can see me cutting into the base a little bit to try to establish more of a sort of knee and now I'm adding a big piece of strip of putty to be sort of a robe draped around its body which is definitely obscuring a bunch of weird anatomical areas that, uh, that I'm pretty happy with. I came back into the mouth area and added some wet putty, and this was really good to allow me to sculpt some details. Here you can see I'm using the same wet putty to add the scales to the back. I actually really enjoyed sculpting these scales. I was really kind of fearing doing this, but uh, it turned out really nicely, and I'm pretty happy with uh, the level of detail that I could get just with the edge of these silicon sculpting tools. Here I'm using the pointy silicon sculpting tool to poke some holes, sort of gum holes, into this wet inner layer of putty for my lamprey's mouth. Here I'm adding a bestial tail, which I think adds to the stability of the model and the appearance from behind. And then with all these tiny little shards of hardened putty, I start adding teeth with a bit of super glue to those gum holes that I did in the lamprey mouth. And this was really exciting because the detail that I was able to get here, I was thrilled with this. It really started to feel like a properly sculpted tabletop miniature and I was so proud of myself and it was just something that I didn't expect I'd be able to do and with the level of experience that I have sculpting but it just goes to show guys that you never know until you try so give give what you're thinking of a shot you know take some risks it might pay off it might make you really happy you can see me here sculpting a claw or a hook rather sort of a rusty metal type thing out of just a piece of an old hotel card 
you know, gift cards and stuff like that that come in the mail. Um, as long as they don't have any value, they make really nice sort of bits of plastic card to use for your hobby. So that's a little tip for you. And then you can see I add it onto that third arm there. And then I wrap a nice little length of chain around it, which allows me to do two things. To conceal that sort of wrist join where the hook has been sort of grafted onto this monster. And it also allows me to add a little bit of motion to the monster by with these dangly chains. I'm adding super glue to these chains to stiffen them up. And then before they've totally set, I'm going to sort of manipulate them into place to give them a bit of a waving dangle to them. You can see I'm adding just a tiny rivet to the claw here as another little detail. And then I decided to sculpt some eyes around this guy's shoulders or whatever part of his anatomy this is. And this I just thought would give him a really cool sort of mutated look and also make it look less like he's just missing his head and more like he's a grotesque monster with a pseudo face but not really. And I also added some eyelids to the staff to sort of sell the appearance of it being a giant eyeball. So perhaps he can see into the warp with this staff eye and then see his prey with the eyes around his mouth or something. I don't know. The story is just kind of right itself once you start making something cool. Here you can see I added some more pieces of chain that are sort of embedded in his flesh. Maybe uh, some cultists or something at one point tried to restrain this monster or harness him for some fell purpose. But as you can see, this guy was not having it and wrenched free of his bonds, shattering the chains. Uh, you know, you could write a whole novel about this guy's story with all these details. I'm, get I'm getting so excited, guys. Here I'm just adding some striations to his base on a little bit of wet putty. This is sort of the sedimentary rock appearance, I guess you could call it. And here it is. This is the finished sculpt. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this turned out. I feel like I was able to incorporate all the different stylistic elements from all the different cards into one cohesive looking monster with a really dynamic pose and a really nice silhouette. And I'm just stoked as you can be. So let's paint this thing. As you can see, I started with a zenithal prime, which is black all over and then white from the top to pick out some of those highlights. And then I come in with a little bit of navy blue. This represents the colors of the Night Lord's Legion, which is uh, the Midnight Clad, they call it. And uh, this really is going to tie him in with the rest of my Chaos Space Marines army. And I'm going to leave the flesh this pale, pallid color because the Night Lords are from a planet called Nostromo, which is a hellish industrial world that exists in perpetual darkness. And so they all have this really pale skin. And yeah, you can see I'm picking out these muscle bellies with a nice deep red and then painting the claws and metal bits with a nice gunmetal color. And I'm really liking how this color scheme is highlighting the different features of this model. And I think it really stands out and it really turned out nicely. So I didn't have time to do like a golden demon level paint job on this, but I got some nice color on there in time for the second call where we all revealed our monsters to each other. And wow, everybody made something really cool. It's so fun to see all the different takes that people did and pick out the different monster parts and recognize what people's different approaches were. So make sure when you're done this video, you go check out these other creators. I'm going to link to a playlist of everybody's videos and I'm stoked personally to watch them all. It's going to be wicked. I had an absolute blast doing this, guys. And I'm walking away from this feeling like I put a bunch of new skills in my toolkit and I made a really cool network of people who are like-minded and interested in the same things as me that I can bounce ideas off of or shoot a message to ask their opinion about a technique or something like that and that's a really positive thing that I'm really happy about. It made me think that you know maybe maybe the real monsters were the friends we made along the way. No that doesn't work.
If you liked this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and consider supporting me on Patreon. The help from my patrons allows me to make these videos bigger, better, and more regular, and I appreciate you guys so much. Stay tuned for the after credit sequence in which we will be showing the product shots and also the credit sequence which you can get your name in if you become a supporter on Patreon. tuning in guys and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.